welcome back to the Chan Chan. In today's video, we are gonna be doing a good old fashioned toy collectible haul video from thrift stores, eBay, and local used sites. I've just been itching to do this video because I had a pile like just starting to, starting to mount in in my room here. And you know, before I put things on my shelves and display them, I obviously wanna show them and share them with all of you guys. So it's only it's a proper etiquette, you know, share it with you and then I can put it up. And I have some really cool items in here. Like some of these items are just like, pfft. the first item up is uh, obviously it's Pokemon related, but let me just get everything out of this box out first. Do, 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 do. How high can this pile go? Do, do, do. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that because I don't want it to fall. Do, do. So for about $100 Canadian on a local use site, I managed to grab the entire set of the 1999 Burger King Pokemon promotion. And um, those were the 23 karat gold plated trading cards. So you could get Charizard, Pikachu, Jigglypuff, Poliwhirl, Mewtwo, and Togepi. Togepi! And uh, as a bonus, I got these two uh, that were opened. They both have their cards inside and their certificate of authenticity. So if some of the Pokemon collectors out there can clarify for me, um, these these are all blue boxes and I know that there's also some red boxes out there so I don't know the difference between the two maybe it's region specific maybe it was like oh this was wave one the red is wave two or vice versa so if you can let me know that'd be fantastic press it up and it just flings up like that or you might have kind of like a little weird wiggly ball and you kind of have to wiggle jiggle it and then it goes up very slowly. So I, I think that this is maybe a like broken Pokeball or something, or who knows, maybe it's supposed to be like that and open slowly like that. So this one is Charizard and this one is Poliwhirl. And um, here is, oh, so the Charizard little card here comes out and inside is this little certificate of authenticity. This Pokemon special edition 23 karat gold plated trading card has been produced to the highest standards for Nintendo of America. It is made from the highest quality alloy to ensure lasting value, long life, and beauty, <laughs> and beauty, we suggest that it remain in the clear cover in which it was delivered. Look how cool this is. Charizard 1999 Nintendo. Flame Pokemon spits fire that is hot enough to melt. Boulders known to cause forest fires unintentionally. So the weight of just the card is 0.124 pounds. And if I put everything together, if I put it back into its case, case, and I put the certificate off and tush it back and shut. Uh oh, it's not so easy. It weighs a grand total of 0.349 pounds. I like big Pokemon, you cannot lie. Next up for $30 Canadian, I grabbed these two World of Warcraft figures here locally in my city. I think it's a human priestess. I don't know what her name is. It's like sister or something or other. And she's got really nice details on her. She's got like this little chain here around her waist. She's got her book here, got really pretty wings and just really nice details. It's gonna add her to my ever-growing World of Warcraft collection, which is getting quite big. And then we have Illidan Storm Rage. And I think this is a deluxe figure, I believe. So he clips in here on his base. Bases are notorious for their pegs kind of um, breaking off. Yeah, it looks like one peg is actually broken off oh, into the little hoof there. Yay! And he's also got these sick wings. Next up from eBay for just under $100, I managed to smag this smag. Did I say I managed to smag this? I managed to snag this The Game of Jaws by the Ideal Toy Company from 1975. But take a look at that box art. How cool is that as a display piece? So, you know, even if you can snag yourself a box for, you know, like 20 to $40 or something, definitely grab one because it makes a fantastic display piece. So I won't show you everything, but I will show you um, the shark. Uh, it's supposed to have fins on here. The fins are inside the box. And um, this jaw will have an elastic on it that is in the boxes as well and then um, you put a bunch of things in here and then you gotta like take things out one at a time and if you take out you know too much weight out of the mouth it will go like snap and it will shut but the one thing that I'm really trying to find out so this box says 1975 the instructions say 1975 this shark says 1975 on it as well it says 1975 Universal Pictures I saw somewhere that someone said that um, if your shark has like a bluish tinge to it it is um, a reissue, like a re-release from the like 1990s or something. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't read any like literature or anything on it. So I don't really take that guy's, 
you know, word as God, um, let me know because I don't know if this is an original 1975 or not because of this bluish tinge. So let me know, but you know, everything on it says 1975. So I uh, reserve judgment until I have a little bit more, a little bit more information on this. Next up for $20 Canadian here on a local listing in my city, I got these uh, Austin Powers vintage Shagadelic shakers. So when Austin Powers came out, my family absolutely loved that movie. We loved all of them, number one, two, and three. Three. My dad in particular absolutely loved the humor. And so when I saw these in the store, you know, way back in the day when I was younger for Father's Day, I got my dad a few of these uh, shakers. And so just seeing the label, seeing the kind of um, graphics on here, it just brought back so many memories. So I knew I had to get these. This one was a cosmopolitan cocktail mix with Austin Powers. This one with Dr. Evil was a Long Island iced tea mix. And this one with um, Felicity Shagwell was a blue margarita cocktail mix. It was called a Silly Slammer. And uh, I think it obviously makes sounds probably talks as well, but the batteries are dead. I could definitely see them making another Austin Powers. You know, they they did, you know, Coming to America 2 and there's all these reboots and everything. Like I could definitely see another Austin Powers coming out in the near future for sure. And next up from eBay, if any of you watched my Chilean sea bass video where I actually recreated the um, lunch from Jurassic Park. Uh, this guy actually arrived while I was filming my video. So I opened this guy up. This is Metlar from 1986 from Hasbro. And um, it's based you know, on the Humanoids cartoon. And um, that cartoon and you know the toy line is known for being so weird. Like it, it's out there. It's almost to the point of like grotesque. Like look how terrifying this is. This looks like a toy that you would give to like some, like a family and they would like worship Satan and demons and devils. And you're like, here you go, honey. Look, I got you. And it's like this scary demon-esque figure. Um, there's the big three in this line. There's Metlar, then there's Tendril, which is like this weird kind of planty, scary creature. And then there's Decompose, which looks like this giant, um, like bird skeleton guy with this rib cage that's opening and he's got a little strand of hair on there. Very grotesque figures, but those are the big three in this toy line. So I am still missing Tendril and I am missing Decompose. So I'm always on the lookout for those. Uh, Metlar is definitely very scary for sure. He really sucks at standing. I don't know if it's just mine or if they all suck at standing. Shine some light uh, here and then you can see like there is teeth light up and everything. Next up for $40 Canadian on a used site. These guys came as a pair. It's the Stylophosaurus cup and cup topper and this T-Rex cup and cup topper. And um, these guys were from like the Universal Studios gift shop um, after you got off the ride. So it says, you'll wish it was just a movie, Jurassic Park, the ride, Hollywood, uh, Universal Studios. One is from 1996, the other one is from 1997. And I do have um, some Dilophosaurus cups. I do have some T-Rex cups, but I don't have this Christmas T-Rex cup. I actually never even knew these existed. This is Seasons Greens on top and it has this little JP Santa hat, which is so unique and cool. And also in the jaws of the mouth are all these Christmas lights. And I've never seen a um, Christmas version of this cup before. And they both came with straws. One of them actually has the straw cap. So I'll probably give that to the one, you know, this rare one. Nah. So I grabbed this uh, online. This is JP39 and this is the electronic Spinosaurus. This is from the first line of Lost World Jurassic Park toys. Um, I surprisingly don't have this one in my collection. Uh, I've wanted it for the longest time, but I've just wanted to find it at a good price because this guy really does vary a lot in price. He can be, you know, as expensive as $50 US at times. Times. So I think I managed to snag this for like $8 if I'm not mistaken. Glad I grabbed that. Oh, and he also has like a, a feature where he can like make sounds and stuff, but uh, the battery's dead. So I'll have to replace that. So next up, I grabbed two pairs of binoculars, both from the Lost World Jurassic Park. Um, this one is from 1997 and it says um, it pays to discover. So this was actually a promotion for a discover credit card. Um, what a cool promotion. Hey, like how awesome is that? So I thought these were really nice display pieces. And then I also got these Lost World Jurassic Park binoculars as well from 1996. And the cool thing about these, I know this was not a promotion. This was like from an actual, from the actual toy line is when you look inside, you can actually see a picture of my favorite Velociraptor color scheme. And that is the Tiger Velociraptor. And then I got these two Jurassic Park handheld games, both from you sites, you know, not in my city, but I had to get them shipped in. So these were in Canadian, these were in Canadian. I think it was, uh, like $10 Canadian. And this one I think was like $8 or something Canadian. It's such a 
hassle to ship. So I really appreciate it when people do take the time to ship things out to me, even if it is, you know, less than $10. That's really nice. So this guy is an original 1992 Jurassic Park Tiger Electronics handheld game. Um, and they're both in working condition. They just don't have the batteries in. And this is a Raptor run from the Lost World Jurassic Park. And I really like the camo color on this one. It's very Lost World to me. It's worth it to kind of like wait around for something under $10 for sure. Um, and then I also grabbed this other handheld. I actually got this at a thrift store. So I was filming a thrift store kind of haul video and I'm like, oh, I'll do like a little thrift store thing. And the only thing I found was this Lion King handheld. I don't know if it's working. I should probably put batteries in it and test it out. But Lion King is my favorite Disney movie hands down. I absolutely love the Lion King. Um, so I just had to get this. Again, it's from Tiger Electronics. This is gonna be from 90 something, uh, 1990 Tiger Electronics. And I also grabbed this uh, Pokemon item. Oh man, it's like not gonna open, is it? Come on, come on. Oh, come on, this totally opened the first time I opened it. I haven't opened it since. Come on. Being angry with it didn't open it. Let me see if I can be gentle and open it. Gentle. Come on, open up. I know you open up. I took a freaking picture with this for my Instagram. Oh, there we go, it opened up. Okay, so this is another, Whoa! oh no, I just closed it. So this is a 1999 Pokemon Tiger Electronics ha handheld game. I have no clue how to play this. I was like trying to play it and I was like, I don't get it. It's actually really hard. Pikachu, go! Pikachu, go! Oh, there's a little crabby. There's a little crabby on the on the screen here. Okay, and this was definitely one of the coolest things that I picked up. So this is the never ending story rock biter. I got this guy off of eBay. Um, and I think I paid like $90 US for him. And the thing is, there is this person on eBay right now. He has a whole bunch of these rock biters. He has about three different versions of the rock biter. And um, he's selling them from anywhere from uh, $200 US all the way to $1,000 US. And he's constantly changing his prices and everything. So I looked on this listing and I'm like, hey, will you take like a $90 or $100? I forgot how much it was exactly. I believe that this is like a bootleg, but it's one of the most sought after after bootlegs in the Never Ending Story franchise. So I, like I said, I don't think this is like original Never Ending Story. I think the only original stuff is just those, you know, really bad bootleggy looking packaged figures. But you guys know I love Never Ending Story. So I was so happy to add this guy to the collection for sure. Really cool display piece you can't deny because it looks so incredibly realistic. Crescent has like this hole on the bottom. You can hear the air kind of coming out of it. So I mean, prize possession right here for the Never Ending Story shelf for sure. And speaking of cool, unique things, take a look at these babies. I've definitely been in alien mode lately. I've been looking for a lot of alien things for sure. And I found these alien resurrection, um, like these test tubes, these test tube specimens. So this is an alien offspring and this is a face hugger. And Alien Resurrection came out in 1997. It's the fourth installment in the alien franchise. And um, it's the one where, you know, Winona Ryder's in it. So all you Jurassic Park collectors out there, you'll know that this is like a carbon copy of the hatchling packaging, you know, that gray top and like this tube. And it should probably say like 1997 somewhere. Yep, 1997 Hasbro. And it also says Kenner here at the bottom. So, you know, like Kenner became a division of Hasbro. So it makes sense that, you know, um, they kind of recycled this Kenner test tubey look. And on both of them, it says with poseable grip tight tail. So both of these guys are actually poseable, which is a bonus, but I'm not opening these because these look amazing in their little test tubes. $70 for both of these together, plus shipping. And that was, uh, Canadian, not US. Also grab this local little Dick Tracy lot here for I think like 10 or $15 Canadian. Um, so with that came these two packages of puffy stickers. We got flat top here. He's like my favorite. This Dick Tracy shirt in the lot as well. Colleen, Dick Tracy. Also came with these two audio action adventures. So we have Dick Tracy, big boy turns up the heat. Everything's coming up blank. Then we also got two storybooks, Dick Tracy on the trail of the blank. And we got Dick Tracy in hot water. Next up for again, like $10 or something Canadian. I grabbed this from a used site. Also had to pay a little bit of shipping as well, but they just shipped this in an envelope. So it was very cheap. Um, and this is an original Dakin 1992 Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus keychain. Really cool. It's like, it's like this kind of hard cardboard laminate, but I just love the details on this. And it's kind of like in this little segmented fun design. And I know that there's 
also a Triceratops in this same design. So I wonder if there's any other dinosaur figures in this kind of um, segmented keychain design because I want to collect, I want to collect them all. So next up, this was a local pickup and I think this was like between 20 and $30 Canadian that I paid for this. And this is a Jurassic World kind of, a, not a box set, but it's a Jurassic World like DVD gift set. So it comes with the original Jurassic World DVD and it also comes with two statues as well. Jurassic World with a little picture of the Indominus Hatchling. Uh, we got Jurassic World with Owen and his Raptor squad there. And we also have the Indominus Rex wreaking havoc on some of those Jurassic workers. So it all comes in this tiny little tin. 2015 Universal Studios and Amblin Entertainment. And here is the Indominus Rex. Look at that, look at all that nice detail. And it has a really nice paint job on it too. And here is Rexy and all her Rexy sexy glory. And then you can kind of like pose them, you know, like on your shelf like this or like this, like this. Okay, we're on the home stretch here. We have a few more items left, but they're really, really cool items. So next up, I grabbed this Cyclops figure, this Ray Harryhausen Cyclops figure. And this is from the seventh voyage of Sinbad. One of my favorite movies. We had that on VHS at our house and it was just always on like in the background at times. My little brother would wake up, we'd put on Sinbad. I'd wake up, I'd put on Sinbad. You know, it was, it was a really uh, fun video for sure to have on in the background. So really cool to add this sick looking Cyclops and there's so much detail on this. And it also came with this little tag here. Um, oh man, I'd love to get that, that dragon. That dragon was also um, in this film as well in the seventh voyage of Sinbad. Oh, that'd be a really cool figure to get. The things that I'm most collecting right now is definitely Lord of the Rings, Aliens, and Ray Harryhausen stuff. So this is number one, Cyclops, from the 1958 film, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Ray Harryhausen Film Library, eight inch tall, painted soft vinyl, accurately detailed. And next up, one of my favorite things in my collection now, I think I say that with like everything. I'm like, this is my favorite, this is my favorite. But seriously, this is one of my new favorite things in my collection, and this is the 2008 NECA 22 inch Big Chap figure. And this was based on the 1979 Big Chap figure that uh, Kenner made originally in 1979 for the first Alien movie. And that figure, as we all know, was absolutely terrifying. It's a holy grail item for sure. It's so hard to find a complete one in good condition. So the next best thing we can do, you know, is get these amazing, amazing figures from NECA. I think NECA has come out with a few now. I know for sure there's been like three or four or something, but this is, I think, their first one of them not mistaken. And this was from 2008. And um, you can tell it's the 2008 one because you can tell by kind of like some of the features on here, like the skull. Um, so the skull here, it's not all completely sculpted, like the kind of skeleton on the inside. There's a little bit of sculpting on this kind of ridge here at the top. You can see the light shining through it, but I believe this is like hand drawn, um, like a hand drawn little detail here instead of like that skeletal sculpting. And yes, I am trying to get my hands on the entire line of these giant 22 inch figures. I think they are so freaking impressive. I'm absolutely flabbergasted at the detail on these things. Um, if I open it up, you can see that extendable little jaw that comes out. I didn't want anything like um, over a hundred dollars Canadian. So I think I ended up paying like 70 or 80 for him, but that's a really, really good price. Plus I had to pay some shipping. Um, so I mean, welcome to the toy room. The Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings series is gonna be, you know, coming out soon. And I, I just noticed that a lot of prices for these Lord of the Rings items are definitely going up. So I'm just trying to get my hands on a few pieces that I've really had my eye on for the last few years um, before they all shoot up in price. So this this is the Toy Biz Electronic Talking Tree Beard toy from the Two Towers movie. So that is the second movie in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. And um, this guy also has a little piece that he comes with. So he get, he goes like maybe about yay, yay more high. So I think he's about 17 inches if I'm not mistaken altogether. But the battery is like pretty dead. So he's working, but I mean, he's... Yeah, he's trying to talk. He sounds like he's gurgling water, but I just need to obviously replace the batteries because I mean, this is pretty old. So I think I'm gonna keep him in here for now. But if, if you know, for whatever reason, um, I wanna open him up, I do have some extra Merry and Pippin figures so I can kind of place them, um, you know, on Treebeard. So really, really cool figure. Really happy I got this guy. He's definitely on my list for Lord of the Rings figures to collect. Okay, everybody, congratulations to making it this far to the last item, the last little item set here. And it is, yes, Lord of the Rings again, but it's a very, very, very 
Sorry, I got a burp. Very, very unique Lord of the Ring item for sure, items. So it's these two collector swords. You hang them on the wall like this. And on each of these, there's three hooks where you hang these three collector plates. They have really nice art on them. Um, and I believe that there's three swords all together in this kind of display thing, but I only found two. And these were sold for $40 for the pair with their plates, um, $40 Canadian on a local listing here in my city. And I never really find Lord of the Rings things here. So I was just like whoa that was crazy um so this is Gandalf's sword this is Glamdring and then this is I think it's An Android? Yes, I think that's it. That's Aragorn's sword. Whoops, I almost broke it. And um, this was obviously reforged, you know, from the shards of Narsil, which was um, Isildur's uh, sword, remember, that he was trying to kill Sauron with. So um, really cool sword pieces. And you hang those on the wall. And they also come with these collector plates, which are really neat. So all of these plates came with their own little certificate of authenticities and everything. And um, there's really, really nice artwork and detail on these for sure. So for each sword, I think there's a representation of, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers, and... Return of the King. Whoa, I totally blanked out there. I was just like... What? So yeah, these do make really cool display pieces for sure. Especially, you know, if you put them on either side of your TV or something or like your gaming setup. So let's see how these things hang on the sword and let's hope that nothing falls because that would be pretty crazy. Oh man, this is dangerous. This feels kind of on the heavy side, but it's not super heavy. It's not super light either. So this is on Gandalf's sword and I'm not too sure, you know, which plates belong to which sword and such, but you know, as long as you have a Fellowship of the Ring, a Two Towers and a Return of the King. I think you're good. So actually on the back of these plates, they all are numbered. They're hand numbered. This, this one is A3642 and it says the Fellowship of the Ring, fifth issue in the Lord of the Rings re... Living the Adventure Collection, which is produced in a limited edition presentation restricted to a maximum of 95 firing days. This product is officially licensed for trading on the Bradford Exchange, New Line Cinema. Not for food use. Food consumed from this plate may be harmful. So really cool display piece, you know, especially if you are a Lord of the Rings fan. And like I said, you know, with that new Lord of the Rings Amazon Prime series coming out, all these things are just going to go up in price. So if you want to grab, you know, some grail items or some things that you've always had your eye on, get them now because they're definitely going to go up in price once all this Lord of the Rings mania starts up all over again. So in the comments down below, I'd love to know what your favorite item was. I know it's going to be really hard to pick a favorite. You know, there were so many unique things from Never Ending Story to Austin Powers to Lord of the Rings to Pokemon, Jurassic Park and Alien. There was just so many cool things. So let me know in the comments down below if, if you can pick a favorite. I know it's going to be hard, but let me know. So please remember to to like, comment, and subscribe. I come out with new videos every week. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you all so much for watching and stay legendary. Okay, now the fun part to put all this to the side and hopefully not break anything.